For us, we were looking, OK, what was going to define the experience that's the big vision of uh, Star Citizen? And, that, and really, for us, when we hit these milestones, then for us, we say, OK, I think this will be the core experience and tech that will deliver the vision of Star Citizen. It doesn't really matter what you think of Star Citizen, the line has been drawn into the sand as to what the game's future depends on. What few features will actually determine the release of the game? We all know the big piece. Is server meshing. Server meshing. Uh, server meshing. 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 The server meshing. And then the server meshing. Obviously, server meshing is important and is scheduled to release with Alpha 4.0 next year. But server meshing, a topic we'll cover in depth later in the year, is a late stage goal propped up by many pieces of technology that were developed and implemented throughout the last five years. The latest and largest of these pieces of tech is global persistence. This key piece of tech will be enabled by persistent entity streaming, or PES, completely changing the way items age and exist over a large amount of time and space in the universe. So this entity streaming is clearly the most important thing coming to the game this year, and it's scheduled for the next big update. But what will it do to change the game for you, and when will you get to try it? Thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. Have you ever heard Chris Roberts talk about his coffee cup in the forest? I take my Elroy's cup, get my coffee, and I take it with me. I get on the spaceship, I fly to a planet, I walk in a forest, drop it on the floor in the forest. And then Sean flies to the forest and sees an Elroy cup when he arrives in that area. So and I grab it and I sell it. Yeah, there you go. It comes up at least once a year, I, I swear. But you can tell how important this whole idea is to him. The idea of being able to travel to any corner of the star system, leave or remove any interactable object, and leave a lasting effect in that place for others to see and discover across any number of situations is a big deal. It's a big part of a game being an MMO, having that persisting impact, and it makes a huge difference in a game that focuses so much on tactile experiences. This is the idea behind Global Persistence. Not to be mistaken with player persistence or baby persistence, which came with Star Citizen Alpha 3.8, while a big deal, that was simply a way for items, inventories, wallets, and other personal objects to persist between updates. Global persistence does not depend on item ownership or location. It applies to shipwrecks, vehicles, weapons, loot, dropped cargo, valuable relics, and more. You'll now be able to leave a stash of items and loot out in the forest to pick up later if need be. You'll be able to stock up your ships with food, weapons, and supplies for your guests to truly live out in space for days or weeks at a time. You could set up your own FPS or racing arenas out in a crater on some moon. Players can leave ships and items to mark locations for resource deposits, allowing explorers to easily sell location data. Global persistence has always been one of the major pillars of Star Citizen needed for release. And even though it isn't the most immediately noticeable addition, it will definitely have effects that can be seen and appreciated daily. It's also going to lead the way for other improvements we've been waiting for. Salvage gameplay scheduled for the same update as Pez depends on persistent damage maps on ships to show exactly how a ship has received damage even weeks prior. It also depends on the tech to keep destroyed ships in the game as salvageable derelicts. The cargo refactor is physicalizing cargo and needs a system that can track all of those specific pieces of cargo, allowing them to interact with and be saved by any player. Persistent hangars will eventually give our ships a permanent home where we can store cargo, machinery, items, and hangar flare in our favorite locations. Persistent Habs will give us a permanent home to come back to with all of our earnings, trophies, or cool spaceship-themed bedsheets. Wear and tear was implemented to show the time a ship might spend between repairs, or the time a ship had spent in a certain environment. With Persistence, we can reliably expect to see weeks or months of buildup to actually show up on the ship consistently day in, day out. Even base building, as far off as it might be, will 100% need this to work if we want all players to be able to visit our settlements at all times. 
And of course, the big one, server meshing. The feature that aims to turn Star Citizen into a viable MMO and introduce a very unique combination of game technologies to the industry. It's clear that a huge chunk of the game depends on global persistence to work. And like many other features, the addition will cause a snowball effect of other features being developed. But while the whole game seems to depend on global persistence, global persistence is actually enabled by the 3.18 feature known as Persistent Entity Streaming. So let's look into the actual feature, how it works, and when we might actually be able to get our hands on it. So it's good to draw the distinction between global persistence, which is the function of the game that we're looking for, and persistent entity streaming, which is the actual feature that makes that function possible. It's not a huge deal, but if you feel like getting deeper into how all of this works, it's good to know. So persistent entity streaming is the actual streaming in and out of data from a graph-like structure that tracks every entity across every instance in every server of the game. The graph that the persistent entity streaming service pulls data from is called the entity graph. Many of you may recognize the entity graph as the replacement for the old iCache system. This entity graph replaced the iCache as the backup database for everything in the Star Citizen universe. No matter what happens, this graph will always know the true record of things, the sacred timeline, if you will. This PEZ service is able to keep proper record of that data and stream it into the simulation for players using the replication layer, a major part of server meshing. This is the key of persistent entity streaming and how it enables server meshing. By separating the actual data being processed from the simulations taking place in the servers, they are able to coordinate without affecting one another if anything goes wrong like server crashes. Okay, wait, hold on. I'm introducing way too many things here. If you want to learn more about all of this, check out my video detailing server meshing. I'll be doing another one later in the year, but that's what I've got for now. The important thing to know for this video is that PEZ is a stream of data that connects the always existent database to the most of the time existent game simulation. So when does this actually happen? We know this feature is coming with 3.18, but unlike virtually any update since the beginning of 2018, this update is based on the content rather than the time. While the company would like to have this out in time for the Q3 update, it's looking unlikely, and they're not worried about missing it. In the same spirit, 3.17.2 was created as a stopgap patch to fill the time with some extra content, while 3.18 was essentially delayed to give more time for Pez. So CIG feels like they've already made a few mistakes with the rollout of this feature and the communication surrounding it. And those same communications haven't built the most confidence of an exact time we might see it in the future. But we have recently received a progress report on how things are going. We've moved from a prototypical work branch into what everybody in the company is using to develop the game. And so that's the big achievement is now the, the technology is in the game dev branch. So everybody is using it in day to day, day in, day out testing. It's been a you know, bit of a crazy, crazy time. But that's the big achievement in the last three, three months is that we've stabilized the technology enough so that the entire company can now be working on it. So a recent big milestone has allowed the service to go from a prototype scenario as it was in May to an actual game development tool that the whole company can start to work with. Now that that's been complete, the team of 18 plus engineers is working on the operational status of the service, killing bugs and preparing it for wider testing, aka us. The entire goal in the short term going forward is towards making persistent entity streaming scalable and ready for wider testing. Just keep in mind, as big a deal as this is, it's not going to solve all our FPS, glitchiness, or stability problems that currently exist. This implementation is practically research and development work happening on a running game. The company doesn't know the full effects of this system, both good and bad, or the constraints they'll run into, until we're actually testing it. There is a chance that this solution might just be incomplete, and could use several more months of intense work before it's ready to support the game. While we understand the core set of differences we expect this to make, 
We don't know the variables like how long things will persist, how many entities can be supported before things start imploding, or how exactly CIG will clean up low priority items to avoid a constant mess. Though we have seen janitors in game in the progress tracker and making criminal players pick up trash would be the best form of combined consequence in game maintenance ever. But overall what I'm trying to say is this is a big piece of tech with an important job to do. And until it's actually into the game servers and running with thousands of players testing it at all times, we're just not going to know the extent of what is possible with Pez. Overall, the next year is looking like a fun adventure of us, the players, figuring all these things out. And that's part of being in the Star Citizen experience. You're able to help build the game that we're all waiting for. When it comes to Star Citizen development, it can oftentimes feel like there are too many features being worked on and not enough functionality being built or fixed. Persistent entity streaming is one of those rare occasions when the overall functionality and direction of the game actually takes a huge step forward. While it does fly in the face of bug fixing considering it will likely make the game more buggy with this new functionality, this will undoubtedly lead to a better game in the long run and make some sweeping changes to how we play and perceive it in the short run. Plenty can go wrong and things are going to be bumpy, but this feature is something everyone can be happy about. And there's a lot more to discuss about this feature, but I'll be taking those discussions to my shorter videos and podcasts that I post on my second channel, as well as my live streams, which I do right here four times a week. And if you'd like to get more in depth or just help support this work, you can become a channel member down below and get exclusive higher quality videos every month. Regardless of what you decide to do, I hope to see you again. I hope you learned something new in this one and I'll catch you in the next.